she is. It's been a couple days since this van has started and it's cold outside. Not that that should matter. Uh-oh. Ah, there we go. Negative six. First priority was going to be to clean the van, but I think it's going to be to go get some fuel. All frozen up here. Wow. Fuel. Jordan, no, I don't want to join the club. You could Do you wonder if they put a TV there so that you end up watching it and that you forget that you're supposed to be watching the screen up here? So moving forward with van life, never again. If you guys can imagine, what it's like having all this stuff packed down and inside the van and try to live in it at the same time. It was packed down so tight that I had a little cubby hole to get back to the bed. But towards the end of the trip, it was pretty bad. I had to take half the van out just so I could sleep at night. New 49ers Gold Club, proud member of Northern California. It's just the latch does not want to come unlatched. Just a little annoying, that's all. It's got nothing to do with that. The lock could be very well frozen. Oh, are you kidding me? I don't even know what I did. Get some lubrication going on down in here. All right, let's try this again. Okay, here we go. Keep your eyes on the hood. Oh man, I need to pull that back and leave it open. I think if I give it a tap, it'll open. We got some trap stick. That's our configuration. It's holding the latch open. Now I'm gonna go give it the old fist treatment. Ah, that was it. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and check the oil. I think it was the second day I was on the road. I pulled the dipstick out. I gotta get this fixed too. This broke on me when I was on the road. These hydraulic shocks gave out. So I just used this paddle right here that came with my dredge raft. Hit the bike out of here so I can get this thing clean today. You're out and you're in the wilderness and you need to start a fire. Since I put the swivel on here, the swivel seat, which some of you guys are wondering where I got this, I got this at Northern Tool and Supply. It's just a plate underneath here that mounts down to these brackets, and then it has a latch on here, and then the seat swivels. So this thing I haven't opened in a long time. It used to smell really bad, but I cleaned it out, and then I didn't open it back up because it still smelled a little bit. So I'm probably going to get knocked out here. Yeah, it smells a little bit. It's actually not too bad, though. This is the CF50, I believe. Domatic makes it. See if this thing still works. Yep. Huh? Well, I don't understand that. It should be turning on. It says it has low power. I didn't think my battery was that low. Oh, well, that's kind of odd. No, oh, that's why. There we go. Anyway, I don't know why it matters, but I'm cranking it back up to 41 and uh, I'm turning the power back off. But this thing works out great. I do recommend building the cover or putting a cover on it. Having a cover on it, whether you buy one or make one, it's just going to help the power and the battery last a little bit longer, make the fridge a little bit more efficient so it's not turning on and off as much. Moving forward, I could probably go ahead and get another 50 amp hour battery just because there were plenty of days out there. When this light right here is flashing like this light, it means that your battery is 100% full. See, this is a situation right now where I could be taking advantage of the extra charge and shoving it into another battery. And there were plenty of days out there where I was 100% full by noon, other than the times when I wasn't getting very good sunlight due to my camp spot. Moving forward, I'd like to get the isolator switch that hooks up to the battery or the alternator. That way when the van's running, it could be putting a charge to the battery for the times and the days where I'm not getting good sunlight. Well, if I'm driving the van, I could be topping off my battery that way. I probably will go ahead and get another 50 amp hour battery at some point, but I wouldn't be hesitant about heading back out on the road just the way that it is right now. I think having the isolator switch to hook up to the battery would be the biggest thing. Now my ideal van would be a three quarter ton four x four. GMC, Chevy, Ford, but there is a reason that I went with the Astro van. Three quarter ton 4x4 van, I could definitely use, I could use the heavy duty or suspension to haul my mining equipment around, and I could also use the full size cargo space, but you could spend anywhere from 25 to 45 plus grand getting a nice 4x4 three quarter ton van. And I'm sure you could probably find something cheaper out there. Most of the time though, you pay for what you get. In the future, I definitely see upgrading to a 4x4 three quarter ton van. I don't know what kind of model I'm going to buy yet. I really like the Ford E350s just because they have big bodies and they sit naturally high off the ground anyway, come in stock. But I also like the GMC 4x4 vans too. I have a few years, I think, before I'll be looking at that. I plan on using the Astro van for a little while yet. One, it's an all wheel drive. And other than a few other minivan all wheel drive vehicles, like I said, the three quarter ton 4x4 vans are pretty expensive. 
and the all-wheel drive Astro van. I paid $3,400 for this. It was a little more than I wanted to pay for it, but still, that's not too bad of a price. It has 130,000 miles on it. It had a little less when I bought it. And my GMC pickup truck has the same engine as my van has in it, and it has 298,000 miles on it. That's the reason that I went with the Astro van, just because of the affordability. And I could definitely use something heavy duty for the suspension reasons. And the inside cargo hauling space slash living space. I have to have the open living space like it is right now. I gotta have it all open here. I need to be able to spin the seat around and not have any junk over here. So I'm never gonna try to pack it down like I did before. That was just a mess and it made living out of it uncomfortable. Before that, it was fine. I had no problems with it, but after it got packed down, it just wasn't enjoyable to stay in. Another possibility is I'm looking at getting a cargo box for the back of the van, or I'm thinking about just getting a little trailer to pull behind me when I go gold mining. Not saying that I'm gonna take the trailer out all the time with me, but during dredging season, I may go, I may come pick up the dredging trailer and pull it around with me. And then when dredging season gets over, I'll go ahead and drop the trailer off somewhere. Right now we got bigger fish to fry. We gotta get some uh, debts paid off and get back out on the road. Peace.